It's Friday, we made it, we made it through the week. We made it through the week, friends. <laughs> pray that you are looking forward to the weekend welcome back to the channel today and if you are new welcome my name is Alita today I have a word that the Lord laid on my heart it's it's a word for somebody who just needs the affirmation right now it is such an affirming word and I really pray that if it's yours that you would really receive it in your heart I know it has been a hard season it's been a very very hard time that you've had but the Lord wants to reassure you today he wants to give you something that will just settle on your heart and give you hope for the future right so as always it's so important to take every word before the Lord ask him to confirm it for you if this is the first time you are hearing it and you really believe it's meant for you please ask him about it because it could be for you but maybe in a different season or it's just not for you so um yeah relationship with him is a very very important thing you know you can't get it doesn't get any better than that um and also for some of you this is confirmation of something that he's been speaking to you so I really pray that you receive this word and that you know you allow him to minister to your heart as um, you know I share the word and even with the scripture that uh, the Lord has given for today it's a scripture that I believe he wants us to meditate on so without much more delay I'm gonna get into the word the Lord wants you to know today that for you who this word is for right you are about to reap the reward or the rewards of your sacrifice, of your complete surrender, of your repentance, your repentant heart. All of these things are about to pay off. You, <laughs> you are not perfect. You've just been through a really, really tough season, really gone through the fire. Um, and it was hard at times. You stumbled, you fell flat on your face, you made mistakes because of how intense things were. So you were not perfect in that process. There were moments where you may have been angry with him, where you were disappointed in him and disappointed in yourself. There may have been moments where you just questioned and questioned and questioned because you didn't you couldn't see where God was taking things what he was doing you had doubt all of these things you you went through all these phases you mourned you cried you <laughs> you you were depressed there was a lot going on but you you stuck to your conviction throughout that whole thing you chose to give up your will despite the pain despite everything that was going on you chose to stick with the Lord you said Lord I don't get it it hurts it's difficult um, but I'm gonna trust you you didn't curse God <laughs> you didn't turn around and say that's it I'm done I'm gonna go live my life the way I see best because this is too hard you really stuck to to the plan um, when you fell and you made your mistakes and God corrected you just like David you repented quickly and came back on track with where the Lord was taking you this is for you um, you've really just really been faithful in, in holding on to the Lord through 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 some things that most people would just say nope this is too much I give up and I'm moving on I can't do this where they would choose an easier route um, and it's not to say that you know that it's over for them you know um, God will still God still has a plan for them it just may take longer and you know more refining in terms of getting them to a point of full surrender but this is for you who's listening to this and you fully surrendered and <sighs> not, not, not everything makes sense but you're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel I'm gonna grab my notes um, and just read what the Lord laid on my heart he had me reading Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 16 and that's the scripture that um, 
I encourage you to meditate on. But um, I, I had a, I had a look at at, the, at these verses, and I, I felt led to look up the original words, like the root word, in the Strong's Concordance. And you know, the Lord revealed so much so much to me that will really bless you. And this is Him affirming you today. So take this as an affirmation: as God speaking over you, right? Ooh. Wow! Oh my goodness, I'm so tempted to peek out the window and see what kind of bird that is. I love nature. So this part of scripture is the Beatitudes um, and just a little bit further. Um, it's basically the Sermon on the Mount. That's the part. That's Matthew chapter 5. I think it, it, the sermon continues on to chapter 6. But um, we're just going to focus on, on this part of scripture because this is where the Lord led me this morning. And yeah just take this as a word of affirmation over your life as i speak these words so verse 3 talks about being poor in spirit and what the lord was showing me through that is that you have understood and you even understand right now that you have a deep need there is a lack right that you have that we all have and it can only be filled by god himself um, that's why Jesus came to die for us so that we could be reconciled back to him so that we can be filled right and you are open to being filled and he has filled you up through that really rough time and he continuously fills you up and he's going to continue to fill you up that is his promise to you that he's going to continue to keep doing what he's doing as long as you are open to him and and that's the poor being poor in spirit is being open is being understanding that you always need him that you're never going to graduate you're never going to reach that level where you're perfect that you always understand that there is a poverty of spirit that only he can fill with his richness and his fullness i thought that was so beautiful as he revealed it and then verse four talks about blessed are those who mourn and what I got here was that you've been through a hard hard season right like I mentioned and you've grieved the death of the old of your old life of the things that were stripped away from you so much was taken from you and there was a grieving process some of you are still in that grieving process because it's a lot you've lost so much but there is a blessing that is coming that is actually available to you right now comfort is here Jesus just wants you to receive his comfort he wants you to bask in his presence and just receive the comfort that he is offering you right now trust me I know what I'm talking about because he did it for me yesterday he just <laughs> the the night before last no last no yeah the night before last I just reached a point where I was just broken because of everything that had happened in this previous season and and also the realization of you know the way forward and 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 the way God is stretching me <laughs> in terms of the direction forward it was just all too much and all very overwhelming and I went to bed just broken and I remember throughout the night because I don't sleep through the night it's just not something that happens for me unfortunately or well, fortunately I look at it as a blessing because I believe I don't sleep through the night because I'm a dreamer um, dreamers tend to when you dream you are in the lightest part of your sleep so that REM sleep so yeah that makes sense as to why I never sleep through the night so as I was in and out of sleep throughout the night when I would wake up or kind of like get into a space of being awake but not fully awake obviously I just remember just saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. It hurts, but I trust you. I don't understand it all, but I trust you. And I kept doing that all night. It's all I could do. It's all I could hold on to. And I woke up yesterday morning with like, I don't even know how to describe it. I was looking for the pain that, that I went to bed with. I was looking for that um, uncomfortable place I was in and it was gone it's like it just magically disappeared I had so much peace I could feel the joy inside of me just growing everything that was making me cry every two seconds a day before when I thought about it nothing not a single 
tear, not even, not even wetness to my eyes. It was like I had just been healed overnight. He had just brought immediate comfort and he's doing that for you as well. And he's saying, receive it. Just call on me, hold on to me. I was literally just holding on throughout the night and he ministered to my spirit and he's doing that for so many of us. Verse five talks about being meek, blessed are the meek. Your humility and gentle surrender have opened doors for you that you cannot fathom. It is the meek who inherit the earth. It is the meek who get to rule and reign. It's not the puffed up. It's not the arrogant. They may be there. They may think that they're in positions of power, but it is the meek and the humble, the, the gentle in spirit who get to rule and reign who get to call forth the, the blessings, who get to speak with authority over the nations. You get to rule and reign. You get to inherit the earth. All of that suffering was worth it. It was not only just about humility. You showed kindness to others in your darkest hour. Others just curse God. Others get so upset and all they can do is just speak from their pain and suffering and spew out um, harshness. But you chose to be kind. You chose to allow yourself to be used by the Lord to help others. Your gentleness has brought an inheritance to you that you cannot even begin to fathom. You said yes to God when he said, feed my sheep even when you were in desperate need <laughs> yourself. But here's the beauty of it. While you were feeding his sheep, you were fed too. There was so much blessing that came from your sacrifice, from being available and being there for others. Verse six talks about hunger and thirsting, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Sorry, there's a burp that doesn't want to come out. <laughs> I want to read this. This is from the Strong's Concordance. It says, for thirst, those who are said to thirst, who painfully feel their want of and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported and strengthened. And what is that very thing? It's righteousness, which is integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. You thirsted, you hungered and thirsted for these things. You could have hungered and thirsted for a quick fix, for something that could take away the pain immediately. Let me replace what was taken and put something else in that space. Let me help myself. Let me focus um let me uh, rely on my coping mechanism on the addiction but no instead in your darkest hour your time of affliction your soul thirsted for that thing that that only god can give you turned to him verse 7 talks about Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You have shown compassionate mercy to those who needed it. When you were going through things that were so unfair, just absolutely unjust, you faced the worst persecution that you've ever faced in your life, but you showed mercy even to those who hurt you, even to those who broke your heart who wronged you, you showed mercy and therefore you shall obtain mercy. How beautiful is that? We all can feel justified in retaliating, but you didn't retaliate. You chose instead to be merciful. Verse eight talks about the pure in heart. You have been pure and sincere and genuine in heart with no corrupt desire. And God wants you to know that he sees your heart. He sees it. And because of that genuine, pure heart, you have seen him. You've seen the face of God in this time of affliction. You've come face to face with, 
with love, with his pure love. He's healed you. He's brought so much joy in a time of affliction. And he really appreciates your pure heart. I have to add that. Verse 9 talks about blessed are the peacemakers. You haven't fought or attacked people. Even though they hurt you, even though they attacked you, you chose peace instead. You chose the peace of God. And because of that, he says to you today that you are truly his child. You look like him. You resemble him. You are the very image of God. Jesus died on the cross for us. He didn't have to, but he did. He could have retaliated. He could have said, but look, this is how they've treated me. This is what they're doing. I don't need to do this. But he did for the sake of peace on earth, right? For the sake, so that you can have peace. And this is why Jesus is God's begotten son. It's God's only begotten son. And the rest of us all become his brothers and sisters when we receive him as our savior, right? So we become God's children because we become like Christ. Verse 10 and 11 talk about blessed are those who are persecuted, right? For um, because of righteousness and also blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, for all kinds of false evils, right? All these accusations against you. You've been mistreated, insulted, falsely accused of all kinds of evil and driven away because of your stance. Because you chose to follow God. You chose to follow Jesus. You chose to stick to your conviction that God spoke, God said this. God told me to do this. God said, go this way. Even though leaders in your church, leaders in the church, who did not seek God basically told you that what you're doing is wrong they disagreed with you because it's not logical it doesn't fit the narrative they, they actually don't even believe that you actually heard God to them it's impossible because they don't have that relationship they're not led by the Spirit they don't know how to connect with God they don't realize that you have that relationship and God really does connect with you in that way. So they can't, they didn't understand it. They just couldn't fathom why God would say do this. Why would God say leave your job? Why would God say fly across the world or whatever it is that you had to do? And so they persecuted you for that. They accused you of all sorts of false things. But God is saying this to you today. Heaven is yours. Heaven is yours and your reward in heaven is great. Because you endured and have proven yourself to me and not to man, I have made you salt and light, says the Lord. I have given you flavor. That hard season was to spice you up and give you flavor. Others will enjoy you immensely through your gifts, talents, ministry, and so forth, but mostly through your love. Your light shines brighter than it ever did before, and it will draw many to you. You have favor with me and favor with people, says the Lord. Everywhere you go, you will leave a love imprint on the hearts of many. Stop hiding now. You must let your light shine because it can no longer be hidden. Your good deeds need to be seen because this will bring glory to me, your heavenly father. Friends, that's the message today. I'm not going to say any more. I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 16 and allow God to minister to you. Be open to God ministering to you. Let, let those words just settle on your heart and just hear God's love and his words of affirmation over you. Meditate on that scripture. I pray that this word has blessed you. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful weekend and always remember that God is a good father. He loves you so much because you, my friend, 
are so deeply special to him. Still